Hello and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to be going over how to make your player have reflections, uh, for instance in water in this example. And the method that I'm going to use might be expandable to other ideas that you may have. So with that said, let's get started. Alright, so we'll start in the Scenes tab and this will kind of be an overview of, of what exactly is happening. If that's all you need to get started, then that is awesome. So you'll see that I have four layers up here. And one of them is the player layer with the restrictions and the objects. I got a ground layer which has all the ground. Notice that the water isn't in this layer. I have a reflection objects layer which has nothing in it right now. And then I have a reflections tiles layer which is where the water is. So you can kind of guess what we're doing is, is between the ground and the water we're adding another layer and that's where we're going to put an object that is basically mirroring the player's image and so when the player moves over here then the object that is on this layer will start to show because there's technically a hole right here from the ground layer there's a hole and then the reflection since it's lower than the object it will show over it so that's how we're getting this effect we can see when we play test again that right now there is an object on this layer right now it's following the player as we speak and it's not until we start to get by this hole here in that layer that it starts to show and then as it leaves the layer it disappears and so that's really all the all that it is we're tricking the the player into thinking that we're adding a reflection <laughs> all right so that's how you set up your scene basically so now before we get into the logic and how to set up a child object, I want to show you also what I did with my animations. So I took the walk and the weight from this and I copy pasted them and made a reflection walk and a reflection weight. And it was very simple. I went to the frames and I selected them all and then I just clicked flip vertical and it flipped them vertical. You can also mess with the scaling if that's something if the reflection feels too big for you then you could scale it and make it smaller like it is there is some distance between you and the reflection that would be awesome as well but i just wanted to show you that you can easily flip them from your animations all right and that is how i set up my animations so now we can jump to the objects and here we'll see that i have a player controllable player object just a bare bones one with a waiting and a walk state and i also created another object and I'll show you the settings here. I named it underscore reflection. Underscore is just a personal thing I do to know what is a child only object. And then I gave it the player animation so that we could use that flipped vertical animation. I gave it the no detections object group because I never want it to detect anything or be detected. And I took away all of its other detections. And in there I have an initialized state this is going to be ran as soon as the scene starts this will be the one that's ran and all it's going to do is it's going to move layer to layer 3 and I know that because that is if we go to scenes it's the third layer over right here and then I also gave it some filter to give it that blur kind of like it's in the water so I gave it one filter to be the opacity and the blue color. I made sure that the time completion was zero. And then I gave it another filter effect that was a little blur, about 25% blur. And if we were to play test, we'll see that that is exactly how the object looks. It's got a little blur to it, and it's also got that blue tint. Now, if the if this area is a little too blue for you, you can always go in the animation sprite sheet and remove the transparent shadow. Sometimes that gets a little overly pronounced when you're using filters. As you can see, you can, can kind of see it's a little more blue right, right in this area. So yeah, that's the effects that we're adding. And it was really simple. We didn't have to change the sprite sheet at all. We just changed, added some filters to it. So, in the scenes we can see that the child is spawning on the same layer initially 
but it's going to get thrown into layer 3 right away. And, but it's, it's still going to follow. So now let's get into the, uh, the child options that we have going here. So all your child settings are going to be in this tab, Display and Parent-Child Relationship. And it's going to be under this section, which is where all the parameters are for the child relationship. And this is what you're going to set for the child object. So for instance, we want it to stick to the parent object. You can see that when I'm walking around, it's following exactly where I'm going. Uh, some of these other options, they don't really apply in our case. For instance, attack detection, there, there is none. And receiving damage, it will never receive damage kind of a thing. So I didn't really have to worry about that. I did want it to follow direction of the parent. And by clicking on direction, that means if I tried to manually change the direction, it won't work. It follows purely the parent direction. And I removed it on some of these. I don't think it matters on these much, but the object filter effects was a big one because we're using two filter effects. And so I had to remove this off of the child or else we would not see those filter effects at all. It just, it would be following purely the parent's filter effects. And so that's all I did to set up the child was mainly just got to make sure that objects filter effects is removed. And so before we go into the rest of this object, let's see how I connected it to the player. So in the player, if you click on this cogwheel here, there's a connect object. So I had that selected. And when you click, you have to uh, click on it and then hit OK. And then once you hit OK, this tab will pop up and you can now enter and connect an object. So you can click the plus button to add. And then when you're in there, you can name it. You can say what object do you want to connect. You can give it a switch to enable disable, which this could technically be a feature. You could have area detection turn this on or off, depending on if you're close to water or not. That would completely be a way to do this. The way that I'm doing it, it's always on the screen. So it'd actually probably be a better way to have it where it was enabled and disabled. And then I have it to where it's going to be the floor of the object. And I also had to adjust the position negative 12 on the Y. Uh, this is, of course, in pixels. And really, these options you're just going to have to do based on your situation. And lastly, in the options, I made sure that this reflection object was made into a child. And then I matched the object's orientation to this object. And this option we actually don't need for this. Um, I didn't need to lower it. We're moving it to another layer anyway. And that is how I connected the object. So now that the object is connected and we have the child settings complete, now let's see exactly what this is doing after we've applied the filters. So right away, unconditionally, it goes to a waiting state. And all this is doing is it's playing the wait reflection animation that we made. And this, we want it to mirror the player. So we're just going to go based off what the player is doing. So I felt that this transition, this link of using a specified object's action change was appropriate. And now in 1.0.5, you can actually base it off the parent object if you want. You could also select the object because if it's going to be the player, it's always going to be the player and you could select player technically. But now you can also do the, the parent object. So I'll use that since we have it available now. And I'll say that if the parent object action is walking, and I just went to player and clicked walking. So if this object is doing this action, then it's going to go to walk. And what that's doing is it's doing the walk reflection. So it's it's basically mirroring what the player is doing. And then to leave and go back to waiting, all we have to do is when the parent object is in the waiting state, then it goes to waiting. And so before we go into destroy here, I'll show you that that's what it's doing. It's, it's walking when I'm walking. And then when I stop, it's then registering, oh, it's not walking anymore. Now I'm going to be waiting. So it's just following exactly what this player is doing. And really simple setup, just one action. 
And so now let's get to this droid because there was some issues I was having and I went back clear to 1.0.0.1 and it was really hard to maintain this effect on a scene transfer. And before I go into this workaround, I'll actually show you what it looks like when you're not destroying. Because let me mention real quick about childs is that child objects are being generated every scene. They're not maintaining through the scene. So when the player transitions in a portal, they maintain everything, but the childs are freshly generated. And one thing that is happening, and hopefully this is not intended and can be fixed, is that the state is still maintaining even though the child is technically a fresh project. It's basically not doing this filter effect again. And we'll see this when I play test. And if I was to leave this scene, you'll see that now the child did not move layer and it also did not get the filter effects. And we can tell it's a brand new object because it's it didn't have any of the filter effects, but it skipped the initialize state and it did it again. And I was having all sorts of problems on how do I get this to maintain well? So this was the solution I came up with. It's actually not a bad solution. And the cool thing about it is that this way can be for all of your childs if you need it. So let's get into it. What I did is I have a link that is going to a destroy action. And this link is the same. And what it's checking for is if a common switch is on. And that common switch is called destroy childs on transfer. So this switch could be used on any child object you have on your player that you want destroyed on a scene transfer. And now that I have that set up and know that it will destroy if that switch is on, you can then go to your transitions and under your portal, which we can see this is the portal that I was using, in the AB settings for sequence A, so when you're leaving, I turn on that switch. I come down here and say change switch, common switch, destroy childs on transfer, I turn it on. That will dump all those objects because they're destroying themselves. And then on the sequence for B, and B is when you enter the next scene. So what happens first thing on the next scene and that is, I have a switch change where I change the destroy childs on transfer off. And once that's ran, then the sequence will be complete and that's when all of the objects are generated for that player. I hope that makes sense, but it's going to run these sequences. It's gonna run this sequence and turn off this switch before it generates the objects. And we can see that if we play test. And I have the object right here, it's working as intended. I'm gonna go down, and now we don't have it stuck there. And if I was to go back up and go on the water, I get my reflection. So it's just a little work around there, had to add a destroy childs on transfer, and then in the transition, just make sure that it turns on the switch upon leaving the scene and then turns off the switch upon entering the scene. And since I have this apply same for B and A, then it will be doing the same thing in reverse when it's leaving the scene. If I didn't have this selected, I'd have to set it in this setting as well, just to point that out. And that is the gist of it that is the the simple thing now if you have more states that you're going to want to be reflected you're going to have to mimic your state machine of your player a little bit as far as images go so there is definitely going to be more work but i think this is a good bare bones system on how you can get some reflection ideas going or maybe other ideas that you might have matter of fact if you've got more drop them in the comments below uh, give us all some good ideas there. And yeah, we'll see you at the next video.